In this video we're going to see how to use the Django start project and start app commands to speed up development when you're starting a new project or adding an application to an existing project. Now by default when you run these commands Django creates some files for you. For example the start project command creates a settings.py file and a urls.py file. But depending on how you use Django there are going to be tasks that you always do in a new project. Using templates can speed things up by automatically injecting code into these files when you run the commands. So let's get started and what we're going to do to start with is run this start project command and we're going to build our own template that we're then going to use later to start a new project and inject all the useful dependencies. So I've got VS Code open and I'm in a project one directory. Now I'm going to activate a virtual environment using the source command and this environment contains Django installed and what we can do is run the Django admin start project command and we'll give the project a name of project one and this is going to create that new project here in Visual Studio Code in this directory. And you can see the default template used by the start project command on the left hand side here. So Django creates these files here, a manage.py file, it creates a settings.py file, URLs as well as the ASGI and WSGI files. What we are going to do in this video is customise what's in some of these files and we're going to add a couple of new files to our template and then when we create future Django projects we can just run the start project command and point to those templates to automatically get the setup that we're going to create just now. So in a project I typically use two Django packages on every single project. I work on, Django extensions and Django debug toolbar. Now I don't want to necessarily go to settings.py every time I run start project and configure those if I use them every time I use Django. So what we can do is add these to our template and then when we run start project in the future point it to this template and then we don't need to go through that setup. So let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is create a requirements.txt file within our template because when we create a Django project we always want to have the requirements.txt file as part of the default output. And because we always want to use those two libraries along with Django we're going to add some of the latest versions of these projects to our requirements file. Now you may not want to hard code these and there's ways around that in a template but we're going to go with that for now. Once we've added those I'm going to run the pip install dash r requirements.txt file. That will install these into our virtual environment and then we're going to set them up in the settings.py file and test out the settings. Once we know that it's working we can then base our template off of these settings and this is a template for start project. So let's start by going to the settings.py file and we're going to scroll down to the installed apps. Now if we're going to use Django extensions and Django debug toolbar we need to add them both to installed apps. So let's start with Django extensions, we're going to add that to the bottom of the installed apps and below that we can also add debug toolbar for Django debug toolbar. Now let's just quickly test this out, if Django extensions has been installed we can run one of its commands, notably the shell plus command and you can see we get the Django extensions shell plus terminal and that contains a lot of imports that are very useful if we're doing shell based work. So that's working, let's exit the shell and we're now going to configure Django debug toolbar. Now I'm going to go to the debug toolbar document documentation here and there's an installation section which I'll link below the video. We've already installed the package and we've added it to our installed apps. Let's get moving with the rest of this. We have this section here to add the URLs for Django Debug Toolbar to our project URL configuration. So let's copy this path and let's go back to VS Code and we'll go to the project URL configuration and we're going to paste that path into our URL patterns. And note here that we also need to import the include function from Django.URLs and that will allow us to include the URLs in the debug toolbar application. After we've done that we need to add this middleware here and that gets added to our middleware setting so we'll copy that line of code and we can paste that into the settings.py middleware list. And I'm just going to paste it below the common middleware. Django debug toolbar recommends as it says here that you include it as high or as early in the list as possible. Once we've added the middleware what we can do is configure the internal IPs and for development here we just need to add the localhost IP and I'm going to do this at the bottom of the settings.py file. We just paste that list in here with the localhost endpoint. And that's basically all the settings for debug toolbar. In order to make sure it's working what we need to do is run the default migrations that come with Django. So we can run python manage.py create and that's going to create a local database. And we're also going to run the create super user command here as well. 
and we'll create a super user with the name of admin. Once we've created the super user, what I'm going to do is run the server, and that's python manage.py run server. And then we can go to the page and we're going to go to the admin UI. And when you navigate to that page, you can see that we have the debug toolbar on the side. And when we log in with this user, you can see on the side, for example, the SQL tab telling us what SQL commands have been executed when we load that particular page. So debug toolbar is working. That's set up and so is Django extensions. Now, as I said earlier, I use these in every application I build with Django, but I don't want to repeat the process of setting up URLs for debug toolbar and adding all the settings for these projects. It doesn't take a lot of time, but to get rid of that manual work is a benefit when you're starting a new project. So let's now see how we can use a template to speed things up. What I'm going to do is stop this server here and we're going to clear things out and go back a directory. If we list out what's in that directory, we have the project one folder containing the code we've got here. What we're going to do now is run a new command, Django admin start project. And that command on its own creates the same structure that we had at the beginning here without all the changes that we just made. And of course we need to give it a name. So we would say project two in this case. Now in order to use a custom template to build this project, all we need to do is specify the dash dash template parameter. And we can set that equal to another project that we have either locally or on GitHub, for example, you can provide a URL here. We provide that link and in our case, it's project one. And when we execute that, it's going to start a new project and it should base the template off of what we provided here in this argument. So let's open up a new Visual Studio Code editor and we're going to open a folder containing our new project. So we've opened the folder called project two here and you can see that it's copied the template. We've got the requirements.txt file. We have the SQLite database that was in the directory. We don't normally want that in a project, but we're just going to keep that here for now. Once you've completed your start project template and committed it to GitHub, you would get rid of things like the database. And if we go to the settings.py file, if we go down to installed apps, you see that we have the two external apps that we added to our template and the settings for these, for example, the middleware for debug toolbar, they are all present within the start project template. So we no longer need to configure all of that stuff when we start a new Django project. And you can imagine this being very useful when you add a lot of things by default to your projects. You can configure all of that in a template and just link to it when you're creating a new project. Now there are some problems here though. For example, we have a folder called project one. This is not getting the correct name of this project. Remember we called it project two. It's simply copying the name from the first project, the template. So we need to change that somehow. And there are other issues here, for example, the root URL configuration is pointing to project one dot URLs. What we need is a way to dynamically inject the name of the project, which in this case is project two into these template files. Now let's go to the Django documentation for the start project command. You can see the dash dash template parameter that we've just used. If we scroll down a little bit here, what we have in Django is this thing here. It's called the template context. So you can reference template context when you're starting a new project based on a template. And the one we are going to use here is this one. It's the project name. What we want to do in the code base for our template project, which is this one here, it contains project one hard coded into the template. What we want to do is change that to project underscore name. This is part of this template context and that will replace project one with whatever the name of the project that we're creating is. And you can see the command that we use below here. The name of the project that we created was project two. So that will inject that into this parameter here when we create a new project based off of this template. So what I'm going to do is use VS Code's search bar and we're going to search for all instances of project one and we're going to replace that with that dynamic parameter there. If we hit replace all, that will replace all occurrences of project one with project underscore name. And that should do the trick for the code within the files. For example, if we look at the top, we have even in the comment, it's no longer referencing project one. We have project name being dynamically injected there. And the same thing applies to our manage.py file. When we're setting up the Django settings module, it's now going to dynamically reference that project name. And also in our wizgy.py file, and also the asgay.py file as well. So now we have that dynamic injection of the project name. There's one final step I want to do here and that's replace the name of this project folder. We're going to rename that to project underscore name as well because this also works with folder names. So we're going to call that project underscore name. And then what I'm going to do is delete project two. So we have that project here in the local directory. We can use the rm-rf command and we can remove that folder like that. When we list out the contents of this directory, we only 
only have project one now. So let's re-execute the Django admin start project command. And again, we're using this directory as a project template. But now we hope to see the name of this project, project two, dynamically injected into those files. So let's execute that and we'll open the other project we've just created with this command in Visual Studio Code. So this is the other project, it's called project two. And you can see that the name of the directory containing our settings files is actually called project2 as well. So that's been dynamically injected. If we look at the settings.py file, you can see that in the comment at the top, it's referencing the correct name of this project, which is project2. And if we scroll down to a root URL conf, you can see that it's injected that there as well. So now we have a repeatable way to start a new Django project based off of a template, and it can carry the correct names through to the new project. And there are other template context variables that we can use if we go back to the documentation. For example, the secret key, which is set to a random key. We don't want to copy that from one project to another. So within our template, we can go to the settings.py file and replace this secret key with the dynamic secret key parameter. So that will generate a new secret key when you run the start project command based off of this project template. So that's the basics of how to use a template when you're using the start project command in Django. This is maybe not a production ready template template, but it shows you the basics of how this works. And if you use something like this, it can help you avoid setting up external packages every time you run the start project command. For something more robust, you might want to use a library such as Django configurations. And that's this library here. If you're interested, I can make a video on this topic. Just let me know in the comments. But for now, we're going to go back to VS Code and we're going to see how this works, not just with the start project command, but with the start app command as well. Now let's see the documentation for start app. You can see that it all also takes this template as a potential parameter and you can set this to a directory containing a template for how you would like the start app command to generate files and configuration. For example, you may always want to have a forms.py file and a urls.py file within your new apps. We're going to quickly run through this for the rest of the video. So let's go to a project template now and what we're going to do is within here we're going to create an application and we can use the python manage.py start app command and we give the app a name. In this case we'll call it core and make sure you're in the right direction directory when you run that command, it needs to be the same directory as the manage.py file. Once we execute that, it will create a core folder within this project. So these are the default files that Django creates when you create a new application. Models.py, apps.py, admin.py, and of course the tests and the views file as well. Let's build this out a little bit. We're going to create a couple of new files here. For example, a urls.py file. And let's say we want to populate that with an empty list for our URL patterns for this particular application. So we import the path function and we set an empty list for the URL patterns. And this will save us a tiny amount of time for this particular file. We can also create a forms.py file within this application. And at the top of that from Django, we can import forms and then we're ready to go and create any forms we need in this app. And after we've done that, let's say that we also want to create a templates directory here and also within that a core directory as well. And within the core directory, we might want to have a base.html file that contains a base HTML configuration. I'm gonna paste some HTML in here. We have a head tag. We define a block for the title of a given page and we also define a block for the content, a very simple base.html. And that's there within our templates core directory. Once we've done that, there's one last thing to do here. I'm gonna to go to apps.py and you can see the hard coding of the name of this particular application. We've called it core and that's hard coded into both the name field of this app config subclass as well as the actual class name itself. If we go back to Django's documentation, we can see how we can deal with this. Now, just like the start project command, the start app command takes some template context. Before we had the project name, in this case, we can use the app name and that will dynamically inject the application name into these files. So if we go back to apps.py and we can replace the core, which is hard coded with the application name. And we can also do something similar with the core config class. We want to change that class name to dynamically use an app name. So what we're going to do is go back to the documentation. And because this is a class, we're going to use the camel case app name context. And we can paste that in here into the class name itself. Now that's not within a string, so don't put a string there, but it allows us to create a dynamically named class by using that template context. And the final thing that I want to do is change the name of this application directory. We're going to rename that to the app underscore name. Remember that's part of that template context. 
and that will replace the folder with the correct name when you run the command. So now that we've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our project two. So I'm going to go back a directory and go to project two. Remember that's the project we created from a project one template. If we list out this directory, you can see we have a project two folder along with the files that we created by default. What we're now going to do here is run the Django-admin start app command. And let's say we're creating an application here called orders. Let's imagine an e-commerce website or something like that. But we want to base the start app command off of what we've created here. So what we're going to do is again pass the dash dash template argument to this and we're going to set that equal to the project one slash core application. So we need to set a link to this particular folder here called app name so we can go back a directory and into the project one folder and then we'll use the app underscore name directory. So that should create an application called orders within project two. If we go to that project two in VS code, you can see we have an orders folder now and if we expand that, you can see it's got all the files that we created by default, for example, the new forms.py file and the urls.py file. So this might save us a little bit of work setting up these new files, setting up a templates directory with some boilerplate base.html. That might be useful to you within a project or an application. And you can do all of this with Django's start project and start app commands. And the good thing is you can reference a GitHub URL if you want to base it off of something on GitHub. That's probably more useful than referencing something on your local computer. If we go to the documentation, you can see for the start app command, we're passing a template but if you scroll down, you can also pass a GitHub URL. So you can base your templates off of apps and projects that are in source control. And that way you can add to them and change them over time and have them in one place. So that's all for this video. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. We've covered how to use Django project and application templates to save you some work when you're creating these new things within a Django project or application. So thank you for watching. See you in the next video.